Thank you for joining me today at the Bees Knees Pottery Studio. I'm excited to announce that our channel has over a thousand subscribers now. And to celebrate that, I would like to show you a few painting techniques along with some glow in the dark paint. Come on along. Today I'm gonna to paint this little gnome and we've done the gnome house already. So you can kind of see some of the colors that I've used. Uh, we're just do using acrylic stains. I'm using Deco Art today. The Deco Art um, is just a brand that I enjoy using. So that's what we're sticking with today. Um, I think these techniques that I show you are really going to bring your art up to another level and add a little element of excitement to them. We're just going to start by basically painting um, plain colors. So I'm going to start with a blue hat. And they're stains, so the good news is it just takes one coat to cover up. I'm using a clay that's been bisque fired. You can also use air dried clay for this and use acrylic paints on that. So this technique definitely works on your air dry clay. Some people have asked that. And you can see my brush strokes don't really matter. I'm just painting it on there any old way because they are not going to show when I'm done. I'm going to go in with my smaller brush now and get into the crevices. So just starting with some basic color. You see how it covered just in one coat. Make sure I get all the spots. No white showing. There we go. See how quick that was? I'm going to make a skin color. I'll make him a little rugged, like he's been out in the sun. I'm going to blend some colors together. A little bit of orange and white. Add a little yellow, and we have a nice peach color. I'm going to go in there and get his nose. I'm going to go with a red, red clothes for him. I'm going to mix it together with a little bit of orange. A nice bright color. That's the beauty of working with stains. You can blend them for your colors. If you want a color to be lighter, of course, you just add white and if you want it to be darker, you add a little bit of black.
Let's go back to that smaller brush. Okay, so we just have the basics on those so far. Next, I'm going to work on his beard. Let's get a little gray in there. I'm going to do what's called double loading my brush. So I'm taking my brush, I'm using the small one, taking my brush, putting one side in the white and one side in the gray. That's double loading. And we're just going to come in and put both colors on at the same time. Now the trick to this is to make sure when you load your brush again, you put the same colors on the right side. So gray goes on the gray side, white goes on the white side. I'm trying to paint backwards here for you so you can see it. Another nice thing about painting with acrylics is if you get it in the wrong spot, you just go over it with the color you want and it covers it right up. A lot easier than working with glazes, in my opinion. Let's turn them upside down so we can see what areas we've missed. Okay, and again, we're just putting the basic colors on and then we're going to go back and do some technique over them. So that was double loading your brush. I'm going to go in now and kind of clean up. I got some spots on my nose, so I can show you. I'll clean my brush up and then come back in with that skin tone and just cover it right up. And if you can see right here, I got a little bit of orange. I'm just going to cover it right up. Bit of gray. Clean it up a little bit. Just gonna let it dry. And then you can go right in with the color you want it to be. Okay. And as your paint dries, you might see some spots that you've missed. So, for example, I'm not sure if you can see right here, there's a little white showing, so I'm going to go back in with my blue. Just cover that up. Make sure there's a good coat on that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the leaves, and we're going to do some uh, double loading of our brush, but also a little bit of dry brushing. So I'm going to take one color. I want green, but I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black and mix it in. You can see how a little bit of black goes a long way. A little bit darker. Bring in some brown. And then I'm going to come in and paint the leaves up.
Next, I'm going to do the twig that's around his hat. And for that, I'm going to do um, double loading. I'm going to do brown and green. And it's going to make it look like a realistic twig of the different colors twirling around just how my little branch is there. I don't know if you can see on my gnome, I have twigs around the, his hat but the, and then leaves. So double loading for green and black and um, brown, green and brown. When I double load um, for this one, I'm not going to have to go over and do anything more. It's going to be the desired look I want. Gives it some depth. Can you see how both colors are going on? You just kind of shake your hand a little bit. Shake your, your hand the better. It, it makes a more realistic look. I don't know if you can see how I'm just kind of moving my hand around as I paint that on. Trying to get this knot in here, the twigs. Now I'm just going to go back around and check it and see where I might want to add more green or more brown. Now my leaves have been drying while I put the um, twig colors on. I'm going to go back and take a look and see if I need to put more paint here or there. And then I'm going to come in and do a dry brushing technique. We'll show you how to do that. You can see how fast he's coming together. So I'm going to take some light green, and this is a dry brush technique, and that means you need to have a dry brush. So I'm going to take some paint off. It's called offloading. I'm going to take some paint off, and then see all these high areas? I'm just going to come in and gently brush some of those areas, and then because I'm just putting a little bit on, you can still see the dark green through it. So just take a little bit of the paint and you, I'm just gently going over the top and just kind of adding some highlights throughout it. And you can see how it changes the dimension of your piece. It makes you look like a professional painter. And you can just put it wherever you like. It's up to you. I'm just gently touching it, remembering to offload, and then just gently touching it so that it's only going on those high areas of my stamp. And don't worry if you get too much, if you, don't, if you, if you think you have too much on it, because um, you can go back and put um, more of the dark color on. Have fun with it. Now that I've done it kind of all over, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get some of the tips. Looks like the light's reflecting on those. Oh, 
You see how that just kind of brought it to life. It really makes the um, the green and the brown on the twigs stand out when this has got highlights on it. Next, we're going to do kind of the same thing, dry brushing, only I'm going to put some shadows in. I'm going to do that with a little bit of brown. And again, it's dry brush, so we're going to take my plate on the side here and get a lot of that off. And wherever you think there might be a shadow, like, for example, up in here, where the hat kind of overlays, maybe in some of the crevices here, you know, the opposite places where you would have highlights. Maybe underneath the twig a little bit. And then, of course, underneath the hat a bit. I'm going to do a little bit around his beard. Now, if you if it's an area where you can't get a lot off, just or you put too much on, I kind of put I think a little too much underneath this hat there. So just take a brush with a little bit of water and wash some of it off. It takes a little while for it to dry, so just wash some off. Use my fingers sometimes. Okay. I think his beard needs a little highlighting, so I'm going to clean off this big brush and do some dry brushing on his beard. This is going to be white. See how I use my sponge to take a little off too? And I just kind of come in over the ridges. See how I'm going in the I'm going in the opposite direction of his beard. So that it doesn't go in the crevices. If I do this, it's going to go in the crevices, and I don't want that. There we go. Do a little bit more shading on his clothes and his robe here. And then I'm just going to take an overall look at him, see if I need to clean anything up. I'm pretty sure I need to clean up some of his robes here. And a little bit of a lighter color. Okay. And of course, any fingerprints. I have a couple fingerprints back here on his hat. There we go. A little more shading around that. Okay. Oh. The next thing I'd like to show you is something simple. I'm just going to take my brush and down here on his hat, I'm going to make a B. You do that by just doing a couple of dots, using the back of your brush, a couple of dots. I'm doing a three section body on my B. So we started with the yellow. I'm going to put a couple of wings. Just add a little bit of whimsy to him. Let that dry and then we'll put some 
details on it. So I'm going to set them aside while I work on his lantern. So this lantern, I'm just going to do some simple painting on it, and then we're going to put some glow paint on it. Uh, we're going to put some glow paint on the lantern, and then also um, some on the bee, some on the twigs, uh, etc. So that when the lights go down, then you can see um, you can see it glow, and it's like a little nightlight. When I made this lantern, I put a wire bracket in there, stuck it right in my clay, and then fired it in there. And now I have um, a little ring on it, and I'm just going to hang it right from his hat. I put a hole in his hat to hang it from there. Just a little bit of planning ahead. I have these very small little spindles here to paint. I'm just taking my brush, my flat brush, and touching it on there and see how it just hits that high ridge and paints it. Makes it look nice and perfect without too much trouble. Just tap it on there. It's another little trick using your flat brush on raised and then tapping it. Now I'm just going to paint a color on the lantern. So when it's not dark and it, it'll still look like it's glowing. But then when you turn the lights off, it'll be like magic and it will glow. We're going to let that dry a little bit. The paint that I'm going to use and take your artwork to the next level is from Technoglow. It works by sunlight and ultraviolet rays, um, or you can use a black light and um, charge it up, but it will glow in the areas that you paint it on. I like to put a you know, two coats on at least. This one is just looks white. And then we also have this pink one. These are the two that I think work the best. And again, that's um, Techno Glow. I'm going to clean my brush up. The yellow looks pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it right on there. It's best to put Thin layers on as you're painting and and pile them up after each one dries Oh, we've made it all the way around one time. I'm 
we're going to put some antennae on our bee, well, along with some stripes. Put a little stinger on them and then put a little, I'm going to shake my hand up and kind of put some craziness through his wings too so it looks a little more realistic there you go he's fun so far we've learned um double loading your brush also dry brushing some dotting and shading i hope that those are effective for you when you try to bring your artwork up to the next level. Now we're going to put another coat of our glow paint on. And I'm kind of thinking about where I want to put the glow paint on my gnome. Maybe some little hidden areas of surprise. Looks like it's building up quite nicely. So let's put some glow. Um, I think we're going to put some glow on the wings and I think his nose too. It'd be fun to have some on his nose. Uh, use your imagination and find some perfect areas that you think would be cool to, to light up in the dark. I'm going to let my bee dry and I'm going to put some on the bee and maybe just a few spots around the rim of his hat on the uh, twigs. Might look like the moon is shining off his the twigs on his hat. And then a little bit right at the top of his hat. I'm going to put some down here because this is where his lantern's going to be. So it'll look like the lantern is shining up on his hat a bit there, too. That's drying up pretty quickly. I'm going to put another layer. I'm going to put three layers on. That's what I like to do. Build it up. Next time you're making a gnome, Think about where you might want to add something to make it look um, like it's glowing. Like I made this extra lantern to go with my guy. You might want to put some stars on it, on your gnome. Um, on our gnome house, I did put, you can't see them right now, but I have, I, I lit up the windows with the glow paint. I put a little heart over here. I have in between. It looks like light shining out of the top of the house when it lights up a little bit. So um, I think I did the doorknob on this one. I did a little bit on the flower. So just little accents here and there. And remember, you want to do your three coats. So wherever you put that um, glow paint, make sure you get your other coats on it. You can see. You can see where it is before it dries up all the way. Just go back over it. It gets a little gluey and that, that means it's dry enough to go ahead and put another layer on it. Okay, let's put some on that bee. Let's put the lantern on so you can see a, the final touch here. I just have some wire rings, some little jump rings, and you can decide how, I can decide how long I want it to be. Let me take a look at them. I think I might take one ring off. Let's see. Oh, he 
he's pretty cute. And he'll be even better once he's glowing in the dark. Again, thank you so much for watching our videos and subscribing, liking, and commenting. It helps us decide what to do next. We appreciate it. Bye now. But before we go, here are some tips and tricks on how to work with glow-in-the-dark projects. First, lower your expectations as it'll never glow as intensely as the advertisements would have you believe. But this is about how bright our project is, if you were to see it in person. But if you want to make sure that you get the most out of your glow-in-the-dark project, the first two steps is to make sure that you buy your paints and powders from a reputable source, link in the description, and to also make sure that you give your project proper charge time under a black light or direct sunlight. Let us know down in the comments sections what you would like to see us make next and if you are a busy bee then buzz on over to some of our other videos to keep the creative nectar flowing